Let's take a look at making this faceted vase. This video will be based on a workflow proposed by Dave BYYPCU on the Autodesk forum. Take note that the faces produced by this workflow are not planar. Also, the edges are not straight. This is a rather unique interpretation of a traditional faceted design. To summarize, we are going to create a revolve that will define the horizontal layers of the facets. We are then going to create a circular pattern of vertical strips which will interlace with the horizontal layers to create the final appearance. Begin a sketch on the front plane. Let's begin by defining the overall dimensions. We have a base radius of 18 mm. The height will be 240. And we have a top radius of 50. Create a three point arc joining these two points. Set the vertical line to become a center line. Every single layer of facets has the same height. We shall create a series of construction lines to serve as a scaffold. Put down the first horizontal line. Dimension this 10 mm from the base. Set this line to construction. Begin the rectangular pattern command and pattern this line in a y direction. Set distribution to spacing. Adjust the quantity and spacing. Begin the offset command. Remove the chain selection option so that we can select single entities. Create an offset of the arc towards the center line. Set this to construction. This offset will define the depth of the facets. I actually need this arc to terminate on the top and bottom edges. We can perform a trim, but that will break the offset relation which is something that we do not want as we want the option of adjusting the offset in the future. Let's keep this in mind as we move on. Next, we are going to sketch a series of lines using the intersection points of the scaffold. Continue doing this until you reach the top. This arc is not actually part of the revolve profile, but I will choose to keep it solid as we will need it for a sweep later. Begin the revolve command. The command will automatically seek out any existing center line and populate that as the axis. Select the profile.
Let's hide the body and bring back the sketch. Create a new sketch on the front plane. Let's project the inner arc. I want this arc to terminate on the top edge. Theoretically, if we hover over this point, we should see the project constraint appear. If that does not happen, you can try hiding the previous sketch and try to hover again. Now we see the project constraint. We can select this constraint and delete it. By deleting the constraint, we are free to drag this point. Notice that as we drag, it stays true to the offset as the rest of the line is governed by its own offset constraint. Let's bring back the previous sketch. Drag the point to terminate on the top edge. Do the same for the bottom point of the projected arc. Exit the sketch. Hide the previous sketch. Activate the Surface tab. Go to Create, Revolve. Revolve the projected arc by 15 degrees clockwise looking from the top. Bring back the revolved solid body. Begin a sketch on the bottom face. Draw a line from this point of the revolved surface to the circular edge, making sure to align horizontally to the origin. Add the solid body and bring back the first sketch. Make sure that the surface tab is still active. Go to Create, Sweep. For Type, select Path plus Guide Rail. Remove the Chain Selection option. Select the sketch line on the bottom face as a profile. For Path, Click on the select box and select this edge of the revolved surface. For guide rail, click on the select box and select the outer arc in the first sketch. If you look at the top, you can see that the surface does not terminate fully at the top edge. To resolve this, go to Extent and choose Full Extents. Go to Create, Mirror. For Object Type, select Bodies. And select the two surface bodies. 
mirror across the front plane. Set operation to join. We need to close these two ends. Go to Create, Patch. Remove the Enable Chaining option. Select these three edges. Do the same for the bottom opening. Go to Modify, Stitch. Select all the surface bodies and stitch them into a solid. Bring back the revolved solid. Begin the circular pattern command. For object type, select bodies and select the newly formed body. Select the y axis as the axis. Adjust the number of instances. Activate the Solid tab. Go to Modify, Combine. Shift select all bodies in the Bodies folder. Set operation to join. To create a pattern of rings near the base, let's roll the timeline back to the point just after the solid revolve was done. Create a sketch on the front plane. and create a series of horizontal lines. Go to Modify, Split Face. And split this face with a single sketch line. Repeat this for the other sketch lines. Go to Create, Pipe. Select the split line. Adjust the section shape and size. Set the operation to join. Repeat for the rest of the split lines. Roll the timeline to the end. If you add a fillet along the base edge, you can see that it pulls back from the vertical strips, giving it a more interesting look. You can try shelling this, but due to the intricate nature of the pattern on the outside, 
you might run into problems. So you can just perform a simple revolved cut 